Hello and welcome. Thank you so much for watching. This show is all about giving you insights and showcasing brands that help you to live your best life and give you confidence. As always, I want to kickstart your morning with some motivational advice to help you to feel inspired and energized to start your day. Today, I want to talk about how life is a projection of what is happening in our minds. Have you ever seen a projector mirroring a movie? Similarly, our minds and emotions project what we experience in our reality and what shows up in our daily lives. Have you ever noticed the days we're feeling low or angry that our everyday experiences seem to be dull and mediocre? We trudge through our day with our spirits low and everything seems to go wrong. On the contrary, have you noticed the days that we are happy, everything seems more exciting? Life just seems to show up for us from finding a convenient parking spot to having our favorite song play on the radio. Our spirits are up and we feel a zest for life. Whatever we are feeling on the inside will project on our reality and the outside world. This is why it's important to feel good, as feeling good attracts more positive experiences to show up in our lives. Personally for me, it takes one positive experience to change the course of my day. One motivational video, one motivational quote, or one act of kindness can spur you on and boost your happiness levels. As Albert Einstein quotes, everything is energy and that's all there is to it. Master frequency of the reality you want and you cannot help but get that reality. There can be no other way. This is not philosophy, this is physics. Stay tuned. Coming up after the break, you were named um, the number one marketer by Forbes magazine. Let's talk about how you coach companies to increase their sales. Well, the 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 thing that Forbes did for me was they're like, dude, how does this guy get? How does he have three million followers on Instagram? <laughs> yeah. And how does he? And by the way, those those three million people. Like, I don't just, like, I'm not doing Instagram for the same reason some influencers do. Are. Like, look, there's a lot of people out there doing likes and comments. Mm -hmm. Next up on the show, we have international speaker, entrepreneur, and author, Grant Cardone. Grant operates seven privately held companies and a 1.5 billion portfolio of multifamily properties. He was named the number one marketer to watch by Forbes magazine. So Grant, thank you so much for being on the show today. How are you doing? Good. I'm doing good. I'm down in Miami and the weather's great here. So I'm doing good this weekend. Nice. So we all know you as a successful businessman that we see on Instagram, on social media, on TV. But I want to talk about how you got started as an entrepreneur. How did this journey start for you? Yes. Yeah, so I, I was uh, I grew up in Louisiana and my father died when I was 10 years old. I watched my mother uh, struggle with money because she didn't know how to bring money in. And, and so she spent all her time saving, trying to save and conserve and raise a family like so many people do mm -hmm. um, on just what my father had left in uh, basically life insurance or uh, disability of, uh, when, when he died. So, uh, you know, it, at a very young age, I realized money was very important because if you didn't know how to get it, um, it, it created tremendous stress in life. What was it about real estate that kind of intrigued you? You know, it, it, my dad was a stock, a, a stock market a broker. He, he sold stocks, right? And this was back in the fifties when the stock market was very different than it is today. But, um, on the weekends, my dad would, would drive around and we would look at houses. Mm -hmm. And so that was a bit of a, you know, it was interesting to me that here, here we were, here he was an investor in the stock market, you know, selling stocks, but on the weekend he was looking at homes. Mm -hmm. So I have always been intrigued by real estate because it's real. It's not how I made my first money. It's, it was my third business, uh, actually my fourth business. Uh, but it was my first vehicle that I could invest in that would take care of me and I didn't have to if I picked, I, I figured out very quickly, if I picked the right piece of real estate in the right location, I didn't have to work at it beyond the pick. Mm -hmm. uh, certainly I had to keep it uh, rented and I had to take care of the tenants and I had to do things like that, but it wasn't like, I own seven businesses today. They, they, they all take a lot of work. I mean, they're yeah. never, no matter how good my businesses are doing, it's almost like the better they're doing, the more work I have to do. The real estate, if I buy a good piece of real estate in the right location and I don't over leverage it, uh, which I never do, um, it's going to take care of me and my family forever. Yeah. 
And what was it about that entrepreneurship that kind of drove you? Because as you said, being an entrepreneur, having multiple business and being successful like you are, it takes a lot of work. It's definitely not uh, an easy journey. So what was it about entrepreneurship that kind of, you know, was something that you wanted to be part of? Well, I, I, I never like I never even heard that term until like three <laughs> or four years ago. I wasn't thinking about being an entrepreneur. I was thinking about making money. Yeah. So you guys that live up in Toronto and Vancouver, like it's so expensive to live up there. Yes. New York, you know, uh, L.A., San Francisco. These places are so expensive to live in. Like if you don't have money, I never thought about, oh, I'm going to be a business owner. I'm going to be an entrepreneur. I did have I did have dreams of one day owning a bunch of real estate, but. I never thought about I'm going to be an influencer or yeah. oh, I'm going to be an entrepreneur. I just wanted to make money. Yeah. And, uh, you know, if that if that meant me working for someone else, I was forced into business. I was literally forced to start my own business because the company I worked for, I just ran out of opportunities with them. I couldn't get another job. So I'm like, okay, there's nothing else for me to do. I can't get another job right now. I can't go any other place with this guy. I'm going to start my own company. Mm -hmm. I had no clue, no idea what I was doing. It was strictly for one reason, mm -hmm. to make money. Mm -hmm. I think I think and, that's, a, <laughs> that's a driving force for us all, right? <laughs> well, I mean, I, I hear all the people say, oh, I did my business because I'm passionate and I love it. And I'm like, I, I do stuff every day. I have no passion for it. I don't love and my first company, I hated it. It was cold call. I was cold calling car dealers. Mm -hmm. I mean, you think buying a car is a lot of work? Imagine selling to these people. Yeah. And, and I had to cold call them. I had no name. There was nothing about that job I wanted to do that I liked to do. I did believe in the product I was selling. Mm -hmm. But it's not like I had some kind of like, I, I knew I wasn't going to change the world doing this. Mm -hmm. I needed to make money. And, and, and uh, the first three years, uh, I went backwards. I actually made less money working for myself for the first three years mm -hmm. uh, than I did the the uh, working for someone else. You know, particularly with the quarantine. The quarantine, like, we're not quarantined today, but we got we got things still going on here in Florida, and and um, we're planning this trip, and I'm getting ready to leave, and blah blah blah. But like, it's always you're you're, you're always managing something else. Yeah. And I'm not complaining, by the way. Like, like I want everybody to know it's not this, this managing a bunch of businesses, even on its worst day, its hardest day, that, that, that is, that is still no different than managing when you're trying to get one thing going. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't want anybody to think that like, woe is me or like, it's terrible. Look, it's hard. It's hard not to be successful. Mm -hmm. Like it's work to mm -hmm. just get by. And I think a lot of people think that running a bunch of things is a lot of work. Everything's a lot of work. Just getting by is a lot of work. Just paying the bills is a lot of work. The, pr the problem with that scenario is, you know, just getting by just doesn't, there's no reward. There's no payoff. Mm -hmm. and, and so at least with this deal, when, when you get in business for yourself, whether it's one business or many businesses or whatever, or you're working with somebody. Like I have people that work for me that will make more money than 80% of all business owners in the world. Mm. So you don't always have to go, you don't have to be the guy or gal. You don't have to be the, the chief. Mm -hmm. You need to find a good vehicle, good company that's got, that's got legs and mm. opportunity. Yeah. And as you said, you know, it's, it's not it's it's hard to be successful in anything you do it's it's not easy you know people think that even if you're an entrepreneur whatever you're doing it's it's hard to be successful it takes a lot of work let's talk about your success what do you think the key to your success has been because you said that you weren't out there to inspire people but you are um with your advice and your approach your books so let's talk about what do you think separated you from other people and that has made you so successful uh, you know, you know, I mean, there's a number of things like I, I, I it's never one thing, right? It's, it's, uh, one, I don't quit. Like I, I like, mm -hmm. I just do not quit. Mm -hmm. And, and, um, I, I, I am a relentless competitor. Like mm -hmm. you, you, you either it's best to collaborate with me than it is to compete against me. Because if you compete against me, I'm, I'm going to do everything I can to, uh, 
it can get ugly. <laughs> like I want to win extremely bad. Yeah. And uh, maybe I got a chip on my shoulder. I don't. I don't exactly know. I just know I show up. Uh, I'm, I'm extremely smart with money. Mm. Uh, I am. I am very noisy on social media. Like I make a lot of noise and show off, and you know, do all the stuff that it takes to get attention. But when it comes to money, I am extremely conservative with money. Mm -hmm. And I'm smart with money. I never lose money. Like I just don't lose money because when you lose money, what happens is you go backwards. Mm -hmm. And my mother, I got that from my mother. My mother knew how not, she she perfected not going backwards, but she never learned how to multiply. Mm -hmm. And so I have the best of both of those, which is I learned how not to lose. Uh, I count everything. I know where everything is every day. But I also, now I've learned how to start multiplying things, whether it's money or people or an audience. Mm -hmm. um, and I've continued to grow. I, the other thing is, you know, through my career, I'm probably 35 years I've been doing business, trying to figure what, out what it is. I have, I continue to grow. When I see some people that I came up the ranks with, they got satisfied, they quit growing, maybe they, um, became content I'm, mm -hmm. I'm 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 a it's a really hard to satisfy me i keep pushing all the time to to good bad or indifferent i'm like i want i want some more i want to learn something else so i show up i don't quit i don't easily quit i'm a i'm a i'm a, I'm a fierce competitor and uh and and I, I continue to learn and stretch myself yeah, and I think that's definitely one of the keys to success is constantly evolving and growing and not being complacent. I like the fact that you said you're good with money because I think there's a big misconception that people that are rich or have a lot of money spend a lot of money and are you know, frivolous with their money. And, you know, most of America, most of Canada and just North America in general are in debt. So how would you encourage our viewers to save money and be more careful? Yeah, so... Uh, one, I would tell you to start studying companies and not people. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, the traditional advice by financial planners is why most of North America is in trouble. Mm -hmm. So, you you know, I, I never mentioned the word saving money by what you did. OK, <laughs> so sa saving money, saving money is just a trap. It is a trap. It's actually, I know, I know this will sound contradictory and, and like, wh wh what do you mean? But saving money will only, um, it, it's what my mother did, right? She only knew how to play defense. She saved, but if you only save, particularly with inflation, mm -hmm. cost of goods going up, uh, uh, the destruction of uh, currency and the value of, of, of the Canadian dollar, the U S dollar, you guys have seen that before we saw it. But we'll see it too. So when those things get destroyed and they go down in value, everything you were saving just got cut. This is this is the problem with the financial planner for the last 30 years on this in this country. The financial planners are suggesting to you how to get by, how to have something at the end rather than how to create wealth. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I'm good with money because I learned the first half and the, the second part of this, which is how to multiply. How do you get money to grow? How do you get doubles and triples and cash flow while you wait? Um, and those things are going away for most people in North America. Dividend yield, check, uh, stock market, uh, 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 the uh, uh, your your money markets pay nothing. Um, there's no way for you to actually your money to make money day unless you take a risk with it in in the stock market. And let's face it, look for every winner in the stock market. There had to be a loser. Otherwise, there was not a stock a stock traded. So, mm -hmm. um, so you know, saying, I don't lose money. So you're basically saying to invest your money the right way, not to hold on to it, but invest it in things like real estate and things that multiply. Yeah, yeah, like like I have a rule, okay, like uh, on fancy stuff, on stuff that you know is stupid, stupid purchases. I never buy a stupid purchase with with earned income. Mm -hmm. uh, like I'm wearing, I have this stupid, ridiculous watch on right now. I bought this out of passive income, okay? So anything that I'm going to buy that has, that is a ridiculous purchase, 
uh, it should come out of unearned income, meaning passive mm. income that I didn't have to go trade time for to get. Mm. Uh, now in my company, like I go out work, uh, we sell an event out, took uh, 300 days to put 12,000 people in a room. The event makes a bunch of money. The event cost a bunch of money. I invested 7 million, filled it up. It made a bunch of money. That money then goes out to bonuses and people. I'm, in, I'm, I'm, I'm investing in people. I'm investing in advertising. I'm investing. I want to put that money back into a new deal where most people in North America are trying to take money off the table. Mm -hmm. And you're, you're not reinvesting. I think 67% of all businesses in North America have no employees. That means the, the guy that runs, the guy or gal that runs that company does not know how to reinvest dollars mm -hmm. and hire people. People don't cost money. Not making another, not making more money costs money. Mm. And th this is the old adage from the financial planner, save your money, retirement accounts, buy a house. Mm -hmm. You know, business owners should not own homes. They should own businesses and have more equity in their business than they have in their house. Mm -hmm. And if you're a business owner, if you're a young business owner, you shouldn't be thinking about retirement accounts. You should be thinking about advertising your company and getting it known. Let's talk about, you're a best-selling author. Let's talk about your book, The 10 Times Rule. What is The 10 Times Rule and how do you apply it? Well, at first it's called the 10 X rule. 10 okay? X, okay. The 10 X yeah. rule. <laughs> it's a big X, but it does mean, it is about times. It is about, it's a multiplier, right? It's a mm -hmm. multiplier. It's like, okay, if you think, if you think you need 10 clients to make your business work, the 10 X rule says you're probably wrong. You need a hundred. Mm -hmm. Okay. And if you think you need to meet a hundred people to get 10 good clients, you're probably wrong. You need a thousand. Mm -hmm. So it's basically a multiplier. Okay. If you think a million dollars will make you financially uh, solvent and um, have no stress, you're probably wrong. Most people, if you look around your friends, your relatives uh, or un companies are underestimating the forces. I mean, who predicted COVID, right? Mm -hmm. So the 10 X rule, basically any company that had was extremely solvent. Well, a lot of customers before COVID had already gone virtual. They were good. They mm -hmm. didn't have to go virtual yet. Mm -hmm. COVID says, oh, now you got to go virtual. Mm -hmm. So like we, we were in that position. We were already virtual mm -hmm. uh, before COVID. So um, people that weren't virtual, that depended upon face to face, and hadn't made that transition yet and were extremely successful bars mm -hmm. restaurants gyms okay mm -hmm. uh they, they 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 were satisfied okay you take the gym business i mean i think 40 percent of gyms in america are going to go out of business yeah permanently or the restaurants uh probably the same number have already call, called it a day why because they did not understand how to deliver food yet mm -hmm. And why is that? It, it wasn't because the technology was that wasn't there. It was there. The technology was definitely there. What happened was the business owner, the Goals Gym or the 24 hour fitness or all of them that are in trouble now, the restaurant, they did not look for new ways. 10 X. They were satisfied with the one X or the two X they were doing. They were extremely successful and didn't figure out the other eight ways to mm -hmm. build customers, revenue and customer satisfaction. So the 10x rule is basically a big multiplier. It can be, it can be, um, it can be added to any part of your life: relationships, friends, networking, money, real estate, you name it. Yeah, very interesting. Let's talk about your business dynasty. You were named um, the number one marketer by Forbes magazine. Let's talk about how you coach companies to increase their sales. Well, the, the, the thing that Forbes did for me was they're like, dude, how does this guy get, how does he have 3 million followers on Instagram? <laughs> yeah. And how does he, and by the way, those, those 3 million people, like, I don't just like, I'm not doing Instagram for the same reason some influencers are. Like, look, there's a lot of people out there doing likes and comments. Mm -hmm. You know, when I asked Forbes why they picked me for that, they're like, at that time, I think we had raised $120 million. Mm -hmm. for our real estate uh, uh, ventures. Since then, we've raised $450 million using Instagram wow. and Facebook, a half a billion dollars. Wow. And without paying a commission to anyone, mm -hmm. and probably with maybe a one-tenth of 1% 1 of that was advertising. Mm -hmm. So um, 
Look, the number one, two, number two, and number three most important things in business is promote, promote, promote. Those are the first three things a business should be doing. Social media just makes it easy. If yeah. there's any such word as easy, it just makes it easy for me now to promote my business. The hard part is how do I actually promote, build an audience, keep it interesting and monetize it. And that's very few people have figured out how to do all those. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we figured out how to do that. I mean, last year we sold an event out uh, two years ago, 35,000 people during Super Bowl weekend. Wow. I know you guys don't know what the Super Bowl is. No, down here, of course we know. <laughs> everybody yeah. knows about it, but it's our, it's, it's the biggest, you know, it's 2017 is, you know, it's the biggest single event of the year. Mm -hmm. And I did an event the same weekend, put 35,000 people in a stadium for three days on the same weekend. Everybody said, you're crazy. You can't do that. That's ridiculous. How are you going to do it? And we did it and it was profitable. Mm -hmm. So, um, you got to promote your business. You got to tell people who you are, what you are, what you have, how you can solve their problems. And you got to keep telling them who you are, what you are, and how you can solve their problems over and over and over again in, in a thousand different ways until they're like, Hey, I know who can solve my problem. I know who that is. And I know how to contact them. Yeah, definitely. I think that's very true. Even just being able to promote yourself and your business, even for people, I know a lot of people who are artists and stuff like that, all of the people that are able to really sell themselves are the ones that really get ahead. So I really think that's great advice. Let's talk about one of your favorite milestones, because I'm sure you've had so many. What's been one of your favorite milestones out of everything you've accomplished so far? Uh, one of my favorite milestones. I mean, look, I got two beautiful kids. They're phenomenal. That's that's a you know definitely a, a, a big thing for me. And one of the things I'm most proud of, um, you know, my kids speaking on stage. Both of my kids have spoken to twelve thousand people. They can talk to anyone about anything, anywhere. Like they're extremely confident. Um, so, you know, that's something, I mean, the, we, we just hit $2 billion in real estate. That's a massive number for, for a guy like me. I, my first house was first time I bought a house was it was, I put $3,500 down, mm -hmm. you know, and we just hit $2 billion in real estate assets in America. I buy, I buy real estate. The people I'm competing against are the biggest companies in the world. They're, they're trillion, literally trillion dollar companies that I'm competing with. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's a long way. I've come a long way from where I grew up and from some of the nasty things I see about me on 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 social media from people that that I maybe left behind that I quit playing that game they were playing and and I grew up and matured as a business person when they when they frankly they just didn't. Mm -hmm. And they got satisfied. I continue to grow and and um uh, so that that's cool. It's it, it's fun to watch people hate, mm. knowing that the hate is being generated only because they quit and I didn't. Yeah. Because I'm not really. I don't really think that they're hating on me. I really don't think that they're they're talking about me. I, I think they're really talking to themselves about their own frustration of like because they could have done exactly what I did and didn't. Mm -hmm. And and I know anyone can do what I did. Anyone. If if, if people did exactly what I had done along the way. And there's other people that have done a thousand times bigger than I've anything I've even, uh, you know, partially accomplished. But anybody can achieve what I've done. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And and, and, uh, and and that is the cool part of my my business, like 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 not my business life, but but the inspirational part of my life where I do share with people like what I'm doing with you today is that. You know, maybe one out of 100 people are going to hear this and say, dude, that guy just told me I can do it, too. And I, I'm talking to you, by the way, when I say that, that one person out of 100, mm -hmm. they, they can that person can do all, everything I've done and more. Yeah. Because that's, that's how I did, have done this. I emulate other individuals that have built really big companies that 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 would inspire me and be another milestone for me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
I, I think that's great advice. And you know, there's a there's a saying. It's like if you think you can or you can't, you're right. So it's true. It's all in the mindset and believing you can and you will. So thank you, Grant, so much for being on the show. You're such an inspiration. <laughs> I know you're saying thank you know you. try to be, but you are. Uh, you have great advice and. I really appreciate you taking the time to be on the show. So thank you and congratulations on all your success. Yeah, thank you so much for taking an interest. I appreciate you and your audience. All right, thank you. Talk okay, soon. Bye. Bye. Tag TV is available on Roku, Amazon Fire TV, Apple and Android TVs, as well as on Apple and Android phones. Watch us live through YouTube and Facebook.